Hey guys, Stray Guy in China here, and well, yes, I am still stuck here in Australia. And I'm missing China very much. So every now and then I'm trying to do a little something that brings me back to China, whether it be through some food or watching some drama or TV show. And there's one thing in particular that I'm doing at the moment that I really wanted to share with you guys. So let's go have a look, shall we? Now this beautiful piece of instrument here is called a Yangqin and it is from China and I happen to own one. Now because I happen to own one, I thought what better thing to do in lockdown than to learn how to play this thing. So I went onto the internet and I started looking around, typing in various things about learning scales or learning how to play and I found nothing. I had a lot of trouble finding any information on how you actually play this instrument. So I want to give a huge shout out here actually to Expat Survival who has got me onto a teacher that's actually showing me how to play this thing from scratch. So I've had a bit of experience playing some instruments in the past and mostly grew up playing piano or keyboard. And I found it really interesting, first of all, the fact that when you play this instrument, you've actually got the bass on the right. I'm usually used to going from like bass up, up, but yet this is kind of like the reverse. So that's really confusing at first to kind of get my head around that you're going right to left, not left to right. And as you play the notes, you're going up towards the left. Very interesting thing. Uh, the second thing that was really fascinating was the fact that you're using little, what they're called, hammers to play this thing. So yes, it is stringed, but you're not plucking it. You're actually hitting it. So these, I'll get them out. <sighs> so these are my little hammers and you use them essentially from the forearm. So you're not actually playing as tempting as it is to play with your wrists. You're actually using your forearm movement to strike down and tap and you're hitting each note. Now when I say hitting each note, that's the part that comes really difficult with this instrument. You see, as I mentioned, I grew up playing the well keyboard or piano and I just grew up knowing like, you know, this note is C. When you press it, C, 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 you're going to get C. Then C, D, E, very simple, one, two, three, no problem. And I mean, I could play that note with my finger, with my toe, with my nose, like C, C, and it will always give me C. But yet it seems when I'm playing this instrument, no matter how many times you do it, unless you're striking it exactly 100% perfect every time, you could get an off note. You could get it, and not just off by a tiny bit, I'm talking off by a massively horribly sounding sound. So it's funny that like, you know, you could be not holding it on the perfect angle. You could be striking it, not exactly on the, the rib part of the hammer. You could be hitting it in slightly the wrong part on the string and you're gonna get a failed note. Whereas like I said on a keyboard or piano, it's just bang, that's C every time. So that's actually been a really hard thing to get past. And I guess with more experience and time, I'll get better at it and it will become more natural. I have to say though, it is very upsetting to me every time when I think I've got it and I'm just even just going through scales again. And then suddenly it's like, bam, and it's like, no, no, I know this. It was fine before. What happened? What went wrong? It's, uh, it's something that I guess the more I do, better I'll get at it, more experience you have. But hopefully we'll see some things in the future coming good from this. Now speaking of the hammers, unfortunately the hammers that I had were extremely worn down. And well, I didn't 
well, I didn't know where on earth you're supposed to get replacement ones. But luckily I managed to get onto someone in a city not far from me who sent me these beautiful uh, new hammers and carry cases. They're absolutely like adorable little things, like you know, that you put them in. Um, that I was just like, that's really cool, like a really cool way to carry around your, uh, your little sticks. Like you can carry them inside, but I just think it's a nice way, a nice way to transport them. It also looks really nice and traditional that way too. Another funny thing that I think about is also transporting these things. Like this thing is heavy and luckily I do have a carry case that I can put it in. But it just makes me think of those poor people that play instruments like this traveling in a band. You've got someone with a little violin case. You've got someone that's maybe carrying it. Yeah, like, you know, you strung your guitar over your back or something. I don't know what you carry, like cymbals in, I guess some kind of carry bag. But you've always got like that one or two people that's got the huge double bass or something like this Yangqian. And you've just got to imagine them having to lug this thing around like it's so heavy and so big whereas everyone else can just walk along, go through like the turnstiles and stuff and you just got to imagine how much of a hassle it would be transporting these things for the poor person that happens to be good at playing this instrument you've always got to worry about how you're going to move it around but it is pretty cool that I do have a carry case for it and it looks like, you know, cool and professional even though I don't know how to play it so that's pretty awesome to have too. So here's hoping, fingers crossed, like obviously I'd like to get back overseas and back into China very soon. But in the meantime, let's, uh, let's see if I can learn anything and uh, who knows, maybe in the near future we'll see me rocking out on one of these things playing some cool tunes. I'm the Australia Guy in China and I don't have a clever sign-off.